Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial on Cloud Confer. Today I'm going to teach you how to do um, change detection uh, and compare two different point clouds and to identify these changes in the point clouds. This could, this could be applicable when you have significant changes between two point clouds and you really want to calculate the distances or the level of, of changes. For example, when you have sedimentation or deposition or erosion, or when you have a cliff movement, or for example, let's imagine you have the cliff and there is a, there is a significant erosion over a period of time. But this is applicable also to buildings, to urban areas. If you want to show, for example, areas that, or highlight areas where there was a significant deforestation, or for example, changes in land uses, um, new buildings that are, have been erected over the period of time. So it has multiple applications. So if you go to my um, Sketchfab, you will see one of the models there that already has the, the change detection applied. Um, it's a very simple model. What I'm going to you today are two methods for uh, calculating this change detection. Uh, the name of this model is the Urban Development in Walleye Creek. So I'm going to use the same side as a, as a, a case study. Um, and it's very useful in this case. I'm just focusing on urban change, urban development change over a period of time of seven years in Walleye Creek between 2013 and 2020 because that was the information that was available. Um, so this, as you can see, the model is there. And so I'm going to show you how to calculate this. And I'm going to also show you how to do another type of model or estimation that it's more um, statistically based in, uh, calculation. So if we go to cloud compare, I already have the two clouds, the point clouds. Um, they should be two different stages. So in two calculated or estimated or retrieve or collected the points in two different moments of course, um, to be able to capture those changes over time. So what I have here is um, I have um, two um, point clouds, the first in 2013, the second in 2020. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is open the World I Creek 2013. And then this is the global, the global or the global coordinate system into a local coordinate system. So this is this a translation or rescaling. You just put yes to all. So what we're gonna do is we're opening here the point cloud. Uh, let me put it in in perspective. Let me grab here and put none and then change here the, the method of of shading. Okay. So this is Walleye Creek in in Sydney near the airport. Um, this is the creek, and this is an area in 2013. It was it has been an activated precinct. Um, at that moment, they started building new, new, um, a new urban developments. So you see some some um, medium density um, uh, residential areas here. They start moving the doing the earthworks, and also you have the Walleye Creek Station here. You have two. Uh, is an interchange between the airport and the circle line that connects with the CBD. Okay, now we're going to open the 2020. So you can see some of the changes again applied to all. And here we use the last input. So they we know that they are translated into the same coordinate and local coordinate system. So we have a perfect overlapping between both point clouds. Okay, let's wait that to happen. <clears throat> okay, has been added. Let's click on these two. They are perfect overlapping with each other. So you see here the second cloud. I let me turn off the previous one. You can see there are the differences. So again, let me put no color free representation so you can see the differences much clearly. So if we turn on and off these, there will be um, there are new towers here definitely new residential uh, towers, um, medium density, in fact. Let me let me change the angle here. Uh, here in Walleye, in this part of the of Walleye Creek near the train station. 
So there is a significant change. Now, how we calculate the um, changes between both? Okay, so we grab, um, there are two methods. The, the first method is the simplest one. And it's the one that I show, I'm show i showing here in my Sketchfab, okay? This is the Sketchfab, the Urban Development in Worldwide Creek. So what we're going to do is we grab the 2013 first, the 2020 late, uh, the, as the second one. Then we use something called, uh, it's a very simple computation, but it's cloud-to-cloud -cloud distance. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the nearest point cloud or two-point clouds and calculate. So here is very in, in, uh, very easy. So the one we're going to compare, reference will be 2020, and the one we're comparing is 2013. In fact, we want to do the opposite. So we just need to change the order and, again, compute. So the one we are comparing is the 2020, correct? And the one we use as a reference, 2013. Okay? And then after doing it, we click OK. It will start the processing. And as you can see here, it will show you uh, the distance computation. So basically are the, uh, the metals that you use to compute. Okay, they're general parameters. We can leave it in automate, the octree level as a auto. Uh, this is the, you can change the numbers if you want and the maximum distance as well. The maximum distance is how deep or the maximum distance that will be computed, but we leave it in automatic. So we just want to, find it out automatically what's what's going to find it out. Um, um, Multi-threaded means that the maximum thread count is the maximum times it will be counted and calculated. And the local model, if we want to model use a specific method, like for example, quadratic, least square planes, or triangulations, um, we didn't use anyone, but this is to calculate, is, is how the distance will be calculated. So if we use least square, plane, then we can use a radius, I mean it's a distance, uh, a radius between each, both, of, both points, or we can use the uh, nearest neighbor, K and N, so it's the number of neighbors around. That will increase considerably the computation, but if you want to test it, you can do it, so usually it's a neighbor, so around each point will be, it will each point of the reference will be compared against its of the nearest neighbor's points and then estimate the least square um, statistical using these statistical methods, the least square. So you can choose also, for example, quadra quadratic, and it only will work with the eight nearest, na nearest neighbors. Okay, so that is what we, we don't want to do anything of this in this, this case because we want to do faster, but you can explore and it will take a little bit longer. And then approximate distances is like minimum distance, maximum distance, um, um, in this case, is 136. If you know that you have, for example, very tall tower, so and you know approximately how is the height of the tower, then you can increase. In this case, we don't have anything beyond this 136 meter. Um, you can also estimate this based on the histogram of the 2020. So you know what it is, the, the maximum distance. So you see the maximum height. So these are the approximate distances that are already roughly estimated, and none of them it goes beyond 125 meters. So with this information, we know that um, we are exceeding or we need to change or tweak this, these values, okay? So once we have done this, we click on Compute, and we start testing, okay? It's a very fast computing because we are not using um, other type of, um, in the local modeling settings, we are not using uh, a specific model, a statistical model to estimate it. Just a simple point to point. And once it has been done, you just click OK. And as you can see, we grab the 2020, and then 2020 created a new scalar field called cloud to cloud absolute distances. And as you can see here, it's estimating the maximum distances. You can change here the method of representation and the color scale. So for example, blue, white, red is the one that you can use, or you can use um, the blue, sorry, blue, green, yellow, red. Okay, if you want to know more as color fields, the color, this is, you just click in this icon, and you can see the blue, green, yellow, red, and you can modify these colors and values. 
by yourself, okay? Um, as you can see here, um, it doesn't help too much, the, car, the, the visualization, because it's in, the saturation is up to 141 meters. You can also display the bar here um, by going to here, a scalar field, and toggle the scalar field bar. So this will help you a lot to try to understand the distances, okay? So we have 141 meters, but none of them has reached there. So we can reduce the saturation up to the point that we start seeing changing the colors in the... So as you can see, all this water here around, it creates a significant noise. So we can disregard this part. Or what we could do is at the very beginning, just simply do a simple segmentation and uh, based on, on, on classifications and then eliminate that part of the water on the river because it's, it's noise that is creating this problem. Okay, um, but let's focus on the urban development. So we have here, we change the saturation to 70 meters. Now, if you want to know what is exactly the value here, you just click and pick the icon, pick a point, and then appears the point there. You can create a list of points, or you can just get the value. The value is 64 meters. So we know here there are 64 meters of difference between the original point cloud and the new point cloud. So you can easily identify what are the buildings that were erected uh, between 2013 and 2020. This could be equally applicable to uh, cliffs, could be equally applicable to erosion uh, along rivers, um, the riverbank, etc. So um, this is one way. Okay, now we can close this. And the other thing you could do is once you have these values and you know what are your minimums and maximums. So you can stretch here, display, okay? And mention I want up to 70 meters, zero to 70 meters, or avoid the zero, oh, sorry. Uh, click here 70, because that we know that the maximum height, and then from, let's say, one meter. From one meter to 70 meters. Okay, that is not good because the vegetation, as you can see, might have changed during this time. That's why it's picking up that as a one meter change because there is a change in the season that was, for example, the lighter capture. So we need to go above the tree canopy. So let's say two meters to see how it works. Or maybe a bit more, four meters. Um, so then if we want, we go to five meters and then we can capture really the significant changes. And once we have done this, we go to minimum and maximum and we can export this as an individual cloud. So we, I, we have identified the, significant, the areas that have significantly changed, put it in the floor plan. As you can see, the river generates a lot of problems and noise. Then we can segment this if you want and only keep specific points. For example, I want to eliminate the part of the river that is creating significant noise and then just do this and then OK. So we segmented and then we just eliminated that part. So now we can keep only the parts that relate to some vegetation. There are vegetation changes here, but mostly the urban development. So these are ways to analyze, segment, and re, let's say, um, resample your original uh, point cloud. Okay, this is one method of detection. Now let me delete all of this. And now let me turn on again, put the down here, and let's start over again. Now I'm going to start second method of detection. Okay. So in the second method of detection, we use um, different. It's a statistical method. It's much more robust. Um, it has a couple of extra parameters. So the first thing you need to do is, again, you check, you choose your two point clouds, and then you go here to this plugin called Multiscale Model to Model Cloud Comparison, or M3C2. You can also find it in the plugin M3 C2 distance. So this is has been developed by a group of researchers from the Marie Curie Actions University of Europe in the uh, Université Européenne de Breton. So there is a lot of people involved here. Is a research 
funded by the University of Britain in uh, Breton in, in France. Um, there is a paper here. So if you go and find the paper in the ISPRS, uh, Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing, the name of the paper is Accurate 3D Comparison of Complex Topography with Terrestrial Laser Scanner. Okay. We just put OK if you want to know more about it and the, and the, all the science behind it. Here it is, the, the location. You just go to Google Scholar and you can find it. So once we open this, we have two clouds and it's easy to uh, identify. So the cloud one is the 2013, the cloud two is the 2020. OK, we can swap them here as well easily. Now, there are main parameters and the main parameters are basically all the information that is going to use the, the, the algorithm to compute. So we keep it in compute normals on core points. We assume that the core point is the cloud one. So the cloud one in this case um, is 2013. Those are the core points and we're going to estimate the changes based on that. So it's our reference. Now you can subsample also the point cloud to um, a specific number of points per square meter, but we don't use it. We use all the whole cloud or you can use another cloud. Now we have normal projections and the maximum depth is the deep, the, at the, um, the calculations will be calculated. So 85 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters. Now, if you know these values, you can modify manually, but if you don't know, you can use this option called guess parameters. So you just click here in guess parameters and this will be computed. There are a lot of computation behind. Um, it has been adjusted automatically. If you click again, you see that the numbers will vary again. So that's just part of the algorithm. So once you get again and click several times at the end, it, it reaches a point of, let's say, saturation, which is not recomputed anymore. We keep it there. Now we go to the next tab, normals. Um, there are different ways of computing. This is so it's based on normals as well. You have multi scale, vertical, and horizontal. We keep it in the default. The orientation is is which which axis will be computed. In this case, we want to calculate changes in the set, the vertical axis. So it's the Z. But you may want to calculate changes in the in, in horizontal way. Makes sense. So this is the default. This will automatically calculate it. Multiscale is in multiple angles and sizes, but here you also define if you want in the X, in the Y, and if you want to calculate Z as a positive value, that means, for example, in this case, we have an increment. You will also calculate the case of something has been removed, like a can vegetation can uh, tree canopy, for example, but the value will be calculated in a positive way. And you have all their accesses. Okay, so let's imagine you want to calculate the erosion of a cliff, then it's an X instead of Z because you are not going to estimate anything because the cliff is going to start moving in the Z in the X direction okay? because of the erosion rather than in the Z direction. So this is important to, to, to set up the preferred orientation. Okay, once you have done that. We go to advanced. This is our advanced settings. If you want to know more about it, look at the paper. Otherwise, we can leave it as it is. Um, only search points in the positive half space, for example. The other is do not use multiple paths for depth. So it's multiple estimations uh, using median and interquartile range of values, specify minimum and maximum, etc. Position maps, this is how to make more, I mean, how to estimate the uncertainty. There is a paper written by James Robson and Smith. You can also check it, the DOI is there. Um, and then this, this requires an advanced level of understanding. And then finally, we have the output. So the output will be, all the estimations will be added as a scalar field in this particular cloud, which is the two. Or you can use the original one. I will keep it in the number two. And you can use these optional uh, settings, which is export standard deviations and export point density, but we don't use it this time. Okay, once we have done this, have everything done and we just click OK, and it will start calculating. It takes... Now it's compared doing a multipass. 
So it's calculated several times. Now it was working with the cloud number one. Now it's got cloud number two. Now, another thing is important to notice here is that the, the number of points will add more computation time. Then first was only 1.7 mil. Okay, so now we have a new point cloud. That's the difference with the previous method that was estimated directly in one of these here. If we create a new point cloud, look, if we go to the 2020, we don't have any estimation. But if we go to the 2030, we have something called M3C2 distance. Now, the, the color scale here is not the most ideal. What it's doing here in the parameters, you can see, is a symmetrical color scale. What it's doing is putting the zero in the middle and estimating the difference, a positive and negative. So this is a negative value minus 84 meters and the positive value plus 98 meters. So let me, oh sorry, let me go to tools. No, sorry, edit, display, active shaders, active uh, toggle. So you can see here the zero is in the middle. The 98 is on top and the 84 negative is at the bottom. So this is a, you create a symmetrical color scale automatically for you. But the color scale here, it, it is not diverging. So it doesn't help you to really pick up which are positive, which are negative. So to do that, we need to change our scalar field. So we just go to scalar field, color. This is the scholar, the color scale editor. Then we can create a new one. We can rename it and put purple, white, red. And then we can calculate different ones here. So we're going to make five points. There are more different type of diverging color schemes. So in this case, I'm using here purple. So double click and I'm going to the purple. Okay, now I'm going here to some kind of bluish. In the middle, I want white to be neutral. Here, I want yellow. And at the end, you, keep the, you can keep the red. So in this case, our, my purple is not very, very purple. And this blue could be a bit lighter. Okay, there. So you see here a diverging scheme. So the dark purple or blue represents negatives and the redder uh, color represents positive ones. Okay, and this value can be 50 50% of the scale. Okay, we just apply. Do you want to save modifications? Yes. We save this. Oh, you can save your color scheme like purple, white, your color, sorry. Sorry, your color scale quite red, and you can save it, and then you can also import it in future, like this. Open, and then you import it, and so we put apply, and then um, we close here. So now we sh it should be here. If it is not there, we just come here and you find it in your purple red white, and then we, we should put apply, but it's not working. Why um, it's not added? It should be here. Purple, white, red. Okay, so now we add it. It was there, we just need to find it. So zero is in the white part. And you see the red color goes to the red, the positive, high, the positive uh, value. The negative values go to uh, minus 84 in blue. Oh, what means this? For example, if there is no such a change at all, you will be in the zero, right? So mostly of most of the area has no change. If you have a negative value, means that something has been removed. In this case, it's very difficult to visualize because our saturations are too far. So what we can do is just change here our scale so up to let's say 60 meters because that's we we know that previously 
it was nearly the maximum uh, distance the maximum change how you can estimate this you see these points if you go on the side and then you can pick up one of these points and this point is 75 okay we know that that is the maximum so what we do is we click here in the scale and we put 75 so we know that it's the maximum change so now let me go there so you can see here the maximum change and this is this blue so it's either trees that were removed these trees for example may have been removed or changes in tree canopy um, there are not many and then you have more uh, buildings okay now Another value here that it's uh, provided is also distant uncertainty and significant change. The significant change is the statistical significance, p-values less than 0 0.005, for example. So this is calculated uh, statistically and the information is in the paper. As you can see, um, red means um, um, it is significant and and this case and white means no significant so or or gray so in this case most of these are 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 um are red which is good and this means that most of the calculations are statistically significant so are robust okay now we have the other value which is distant uncertainty so your uncertainty increases as the calculation is not properly done it's like the level of error so as you can see, most of the of the points are in the blue. Many are not, and and this means that there is uncertainty in those points. And I will explain you why. Look, if you move again the saturation, you will start seeing better. So what it highlights here, for example, the level of uncertainty of ground and buildings is nearly zero, or around zero point three or zero point four. That is zero point four meters. It's for example the level of error. But you can see the tree canopy highlights as a, let's say, 0. Point something. Let me pick up one of those points. Um, it's around 0. 0.5, the vegetation. Look, um, 0. 0.5. Some of them are one. And what means this? It means that this tree canopy may vary, okay? It's a foliage. So it picks up some level of uncertainty or larger error um, because the trees are more like in, 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 in are not uniform shapes so it's the calculation there includes more error and these ones here are, are as you can see in this corner of the creek are uh highly uncertain why because this this doesn't even even appear because they are both so definitely they didn't even exist in one um, point cloud and they exist in the other point cloud. So it's it's just um, very sporadic. It's an sporadic feature that has um, not been properly calculated. So as you can see here, this just gives you how it's statistically robust or not your calculation and then you can have the distances. Now, you want to export this information either with the previous method or this method to um, the point cloud and then import in sketchup as my as, as the model that i'm showing you here so how to do that you have to transfer the scalar field as a rgb very simple you just grab i showed this in another video but it's very simple to do it i will show you again you choose the scalar field you choose the m3c2 distance then you go to edit scalar fields and convert to RGB and you decide if to mix or not with existing in this case I say no so this now become a RGB color so if you go to the scalar field and you for example choose significant change if you go to the RGB the RGB now has the color of your uh, estimations okay so this basically two methods on how to calculate change detection um, you can again segment this information. Um, to do it quickly. Um, you go to the scalar field, choose the correct scalar field, and choose the number. So the numbers is 75 from minus 84. Um, no, I don't want minus 84. Um, 
let's imagine from zero, okay? So you want to know which buildings just were erected. And then you just go to minimum and maximum uh, filter and we export this information. And so you can see here, the export is not very good. So we need to re-export, maybe include one meter or even more, maybe five meters like the previous time. And again, re-export and let's see how it works. It's, it's a bit better. So there's a lot of noise here. So at least here, you have a rough idea where are located the buildings that were erected um, after, between 2013 and 2020. So you can really estimate uh, urban development change in a particular place. Again, this can be used for erosion, this can be used for deposition, this can be used for other type of changes in tree canopy, etc. Um, so I hope this um, video has been of um, useful for you. I recommend you to have a look at the papers behind these estimations. Um, and so basically that's all for today. Hopefully um, you can apply this for your analysis uh, in, in future and see you next time. Thank you very much.